So here I have my contact page that we've been building up in the previous tutorials. And what I'm going to do is down here, underneath all the contact information, I want to put a form in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my forms tab on my insert bar. And I can't just go straight ahead and start checking radio buttons and check boxes and things in here. What I need to do is tell Dreamweaver that I'm going to be putting a form in this page. So that's easily done by just hitting the form button here. And you'll see that it creates this red dotted bounding box. Now, whenever you're working with forms, you need to make sure that you're working within that red bounding box. Otherwise, you're going to get all sorts of problems when you come to trying to submit the form data and then get it into your database at the other end. So just remember that whatever you put inside this dotted red box is going to be included in your form. If you put it outside this box, it's not going to be included when that form data is sent to your server. So we click inside and we know we're inside because we've got the form name in our properties inspector. And this is just called form one. We've got a few other bits and pieces here that we'll deal with a bit later on when we come to processing forms. But being as we're inside this very small form area here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go over to my common tab and I'm going to insert a table. I'm going to make sure this is only two columns wide and I want it to be 100% width. Now that doesn't mean that it's going to be 100% the width of the browser window. What it means is it's going to be 100% the width of the cell that I'm putting it into. So we better make sure that there's no border thickness or padding or spacing. And what I do is if I say OK there, and I click out of it, you can see that that table is within that dotted red bounding box. So now we know that anything we drop inside this table is definitely going to be in our form. And we can also use this table columns to help lay out our form to make it look nice and neat. And if you watch the tutorial on tables, you might remember that I called this nesting tables. And this was the predominant way of laying out websites until the adoption of CSS. So let's create this form. The first thing that I want to enter into this table is a field where the visitor can enter their name. So let's click in the table cell that we want to put this text field into. And then we need to go up to the forms tab of the insert bar and select our text field. And you can see that, that brings up the input tag accessibility attributes dialog box. Now, because we're adding elements to a form, it's probably best to give these IDs as we go along, although we can come back to them afterwards. Um, I'm going to be asking for someone's name, so I'm just going to give it the ID of name. And then the label is the text that's going to go along with the text field. Now, if you say no label tag, then there's no point in putting anything in here because no label will be tagged onto the text field. But you can choose to wrap the label with the tag or attach the label using the for attribute. Now, because I'm going to be moving things around in this layout, I'm not going to leave it exactly how Dreamweaver does it. I'm going to use this for attribute just to make my life a little bit easier. And you'll see why in a bit. Now, in label, this is the label that we want to give the text field. And because this is what the user is going to see, we can be a bit more verbose here. So we can say, enter your name here. And uh, that will appear next to the text field. And we can decide whether we want that label to come before or after the text field. Well, really, we want that to come before. So that's everything that we're going to do here. We say OK. And you can see straight away that we've got a text field here and the label that goes with that text field. So now we've created our first text field. And uh, what we can see if we click on it, we come down here, we can see that there's the ID name that I gave it. And I just called it name because it's the field that I want people to write their name into. Now, there's a very good reason for making sure that I've given these IDs, which is the ID is going to come up when you submit the form information. So if I didn't give this a name, I'm not really going to know when I get all my form data sent through to my server what on earth this was in relation to, especially if I've got a problem with my labels. Now, if you were just going to leave your label here next to the field, uh, there wouldn't be a problem. You wouldn't have to go through any of this. So if you just wanted to essentially create them all in a straight line like this and just have them all one after another and not worry too much about the fact that all the questions are a different length and the boxes might be in different places, then just go ahead and do it this way. But what I like to do is to try and get things to line up a little bit better than that. So what I'll do is select the entire label using this HTML tag down here and introduce you to a, a, the quick tag editor, which is Control T on the PC or Command T on the Mac. And when you do that, you can see that we get the edit tag. And this label is attached using the for attribute 
to name. And name is the name that we gave to this text field here. So that should make sense. The label that we've created, enter your name here, is attached using the for attribute to the name text field. Now what I can do is I can then grab hold of that and drop it over here in this other box. Now the problem is, if I hit Control T or Command T on the Mac, you'll see that Dreamweaver's got this horrible habit of now breaking my for attribute. And it's gone back to being label for label rather than label for name. So all you've got to do if you move your labels around is remember to come into the quick tag editor and change that back to the right tag so that we know that this label here is attached to this field here. This field is called name. So this label should be, if we select it all, hit Control or Command T, the label for name. Excellent. We know that's all working fine. So hopefully that makes quite a lot of sense. You're making sure that this label is still attached to this. Now, the main reason for this is, again, accessibility. If someone comes to my website and they're using a screen reader, how on earth are they going to know which text fields are associated to which bits of text? Now, we could simply type in here, enter your name, colon, and then we could chuck in over here a text field without a label. And it would look exactly the same and it would function in a similar way. But you're not going to be getting uh, the accessibility and you're also not going to be getting the label information being sent with your form. So I'm just going to delete these out. And now that we've got our name filled in, let's uh, move on to the next. So let's add a new text field. And this one's going to be for email addresses. So we come back up to the form part of the insert bar and we hit text field. So it's going to be for emails. So let's say email. We'll label it saying enter your email. We're going to attach this again using the for attribute and we want this to be positioned the label before the item. So we say OK. And remember our ID for this text field is email. So when we select the entire label and we use control or command T for our quick label editor, quick tag editor, we've got um, email set as our tag. But when we pull it over here, again, Dreamweaver is going to break that up for us. So we've just got to make sure that we come in and make sure that we spell this right. Get it back to email. And then that way, these are still connected to the correct text fields. Now, there is another type of text field that we haven't looked at yet, which works in exactly the same way. And that's this text area. Now, the thing about a text area is um, it just is a little bit easier for your user to interact with. Let me just stick one in here. And this is going to be for further comments. So I'm just going to give it the idea of comments. And I'm going to say any further comments. We're going to attach it again using the for attribute. And now you can see we get a huge text area that our users can type into. Now the thing is that both this text area and this text area have an unlimited amount of text that you could type into them. But it's a lot easier to see what you're typing if you're typing it into a big text area like this. So just before I show you some of the variables that we can set on these text fields, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this any further comments, select the label, control T or command T to double check. Yes, this is the label for comments. What I want to do is just drag it and drop it over here and control or command T again and just reset that as comments. It can be quite annoying having to do that over and over again. But now what I can start doing is looking at how my form is looking in terms of layout and what I could do to this to make it look a little bit nicer and to make it look a little bit more user friendly. So let's start off by making this text field that we've created a little less imposing on the page. So let's click in that and have a look at the property inspector to see what options we've got to play with here. Now what we've got is character width and this is the width of the box in how many characters that can be displayed in it. I think 45 is a little bit excessive. Let's just drop that down to 25. You can see straight away the box has got a little bit smaller, a little bit more manageable. We also have the number of lines, which would be visible one, two, three, four, five lines. I think that's also a bit big. I'm not expecting that much in the way of comments. So let's just drop that down to four. And that'll give us a slightly less imposing box. Now, there's other things that we can do. Um, let me show you with these ones. We've got exactly the same options to set the character width. And what I'd like to do is try and line.